apocalypse. The end of the world as we know it. That day when the ship hits the sand. Many things could trigger a total collapse of society. The question is, if you could only bring one gun to survive it, which one is the best pick? The truth is, when it comes to surviving the apocalypse, there is one gun that is clearly superior to all others. Nothing else even comes close. That's a bold claim, but it's backed up by a tall stack of facts. When I say apocalypse, I mean an epic, earth-changing event. One that completely unravels the fabric of society. Our modern food and supply chains break down. The rule of law is abandoned. Areas of the earth become uninhabitable, forcing mass human migrations. It's a time marked by years and years of unpredictability and chaos. In this kind of world, you need a versatile weapon. A great apocalypse gun must kick ass in the following categories. Self-defense, travel, ammo scarcity, hunting, and exotic threats. This is the Raging Judge Magnum. A double action revolver with a six inch barrel and an extra thick extended six shot cylinder. It chambers 454 Casul, 45 Colt, and 410 shotgun shells. First, the 454 Casul, a 45 caliber bullet with an extraordinarily high pressure cartridge. This is one of the most powerful handgun rounds on earth. A bullet's speed and weight determine how hard it hits. This is known as muzzle energy and it's measured in foot pounds. Here are the muzzle energies for common handgun cartridges based on the specs for Hornady's best ammunition in each caliber. None of these handgun rounds generate enough energy to penetrate soft body armor. To punch through armor, you need the kind of power typically only generated by rifle rounds. Here are the muzzle energies for AR-15 and AK-47 cartridges. Now, here's the 454 Casul. It shoots big bullets at blistering fast speeds. Just like rifle rounds, Casul rounds zip through level 3A body armor. The same armor that stops all those handgun rounds, and even shotgun slugs. See the links for a video demonstration. The ability to penetrate armor is essential for any serious apocalypse gun. Now all that power means Kasul rounds can blast through tough cover and still destroy whatever's hiding behind it. Now, the 45 Cold Round. This is the cartridge the Cowboys used. By modern standards, it's underpowered. Newer plus P rounds are a step up, but that's not what makes this caliber useful. This is a maximum expansion round. It is a gigantic bullet that will only fit in guns that chamber 45 Colt and have an extended cylinder, like the Raging Judge Magnum. When it hits soft tissue, it instantly expands to a horrifying one and three quarter inches. It is utterly devastating. No other handgun round in the world expands anywhere near that big. Why is that important? In home defense, folks worry about overpenetration. This problem could be even more of a concern when you're living in tents. Overpenetration is not a danger with maximum expansion rounds. When they hit, those opening pedals act like brakes, and the round dumps all of its devastating kinetic energy in the body of the very first target. Next, the 410 shotgun shell. The Raging Judge Magnum chambers both 2.5 inch and 3 inch cartridges. There are several types of 410 shells, but one of the best is the 3 inch Triple Ot Buck by Federal. This shell fires 5 pellets, each about the size of a 9mm bullet. Through the Raging Judge Magnum's 6 inch barrel, the pellets penetrate an average of 16 inches in ballistics gel. Back to the Apocalypse Challenge. The first key topic is self-defense. To get this right, you need to understand what really goes down in a gunfight. Real shooting incidents don't last long. New York City police records show that cops fire an average of just under three rounds per incident. For private citizens, that number drops to two. And out of 484 incidents studied, only three involved reloading. That's less than 1%. There are two big takeaways here. One, the first shots fired are the most important. And two, high capacity magazines are not a priority. 
Now let's look at how the Raging Judge Magnum, loaded with 410 triple lot buck, stacks up against a popular gun like the Glock 17 9mm. At the first trigger pull, the Judge puts five 9mm projectiles into the air, compared with the Glock's one. By the time the Glock squeezes off a second round, the Raging Judge has got 10 projectiles downrange. With the third trigger pull, the Judge has launched 15, and the Glock's launched 3. At this point, the average incident is over. This was never going to be a fair fight. That looks great on paper, but if you're smart, you're wondering about range and accuracy. Back to real gunfights. The New York City Police Department also kept records on engagement distances. 88% of gunfights and dog shootings occur at 21 feet or less. The FBI studied 601 cases where law officers were killed by guns. They found 95% of slangs occurred at 15 feet or less and no officers were killed from more than 25 feet away. The big takeaway here is that for self-defense, accuracy at over 21 feet is not a priority. Here's how the Raging Judge Magnum groups those five triple-lot pellets at 21 feet. Two and a quarter inches center to center. This would be a solid grouping of single shots at the range, and a miracle grouping for the first five shots of a gunfight. The next topic is ammo scarcity. During an extended apocalypse event, you may get separated from your stockpile of ammunition and be forced to scavenge or barter for ammo. Conventional wisdom says your apocalypse gun should fire the most common caliber cartridges, so you have a high likelihood of finding it if you need to. Here are America's most popular calibers ranked by sales revenue. You'll notice that 454 Casul, 45 Colt, and 410 Shotgun are not on the list. But the Raging Judge Magnum has a few tricks up its sleeve. These adapters fit into its extended cylinder and allow it to fire 9mm, 22, 380 APC, and even 38 specials. Now it's not the same as a true barrel, but it definitely works in a pinch. With this moon clip, the Raging Judge can also fire 45 APC with the full benefit of its 6 inch barrel. This means that the Raging Judge Magnum can fire three of the five most common calibers and a half a dozen others. There is much more to the ammo scarcity story though. Over time, ammo will be harder and harder to find and its quality will degrade dramatically both through age and shoddy reloading. This is where revolvers really shine and semi-automatic pistols and rifles can become a big liability. First, revolvers capture all their brass so it can be reloaded later if needed. Second, high capacity semi-autos encourage firing many more rounds than are needed, exactly the opposite of what you want in an ammo scarce environment. When ammo is scarce, you want to end unfortunate encounters with one devastating and decisive shot. Third, and most important, even slightly crappy ammo can cause semi-autos to misfire forcing the shooter into a two-handed clearing sequence where the weapon's aim is taken off the target. This is terrible, considering shooting incidents are typically over after the third shot. With a revolver, clearing a misfire is instant and instinctual. Just pull the trigger again. Only one hand is needed and the weapon can stay trained on the target. With crappy ammo, the Raging Judge offers one more unique advantage. Its extra thick high pressure cylinder allows it to withstand the damage caused by botched reloads and compromised cartridges, damage that destroys other weapons. The next topic is very important, travel. During the apocalypse, foot travel will likely become unavoidable, and then the three biggest considerations for an apocalypse gun become its weight, concealability, and one-handed use. This is where long guns, like rifles and shotguns, start to become a liability. This shows the weights of common long guns compared to the weight of the Raging Judge Magnum. Is it fair to compare a handgun to long guns? I've already shown that Kasul cartridges are more powerful than two of these rifles. Ballistic gel tests show that hollow point Kasul damage is comparable to 12 gauge slug damage. So yes, it's more than fair. 
At four and a half pounds, the Raging Judge is beefy for a handgun. That weight, by the way, significantly reduces recoil. Heavy as it may be, it is still significantly lighter than the long guns. Concealability is also very important. There will be situations where you do not want to announce to the world that you are carrying a firearm. A serious apocalypse gun must be able to fit in a small pack or under a car seat. Whether you need your other hand to do something or carry something, one-handed weapon operation can be very important. Next up, hunting. During an apocalypse, you will need to hunt for your own food. An apocalypse gun must be able to effectively harvest everything from big animals like elk to smaller game like coyotes and squirrels. The 454 Casul round has long proven itself capable of harvesting large game. Its effective range can stretch out to 150 yards. When it comes to medium game like coyotes, turkey, and small deer, you can step down to the 45 Colt rounds. The effective ranges here are between 25 and 100 yards. When it comes to small creatures, the Raging Judge Magnum has two options. At ranges of 10 feet or less, 410 birdshot loads are effective. At ranges of 10 to 30 feet, 22 rounds fired from the cylinder adapters are a suitable option. This also allows you to fire quiet subsonic 22s. This is great if you don't want to call attention to yourself. The final category is exotic threats. Pop culture has spun up some wild fantasies about the exotic threats that could arrive with an apocalypse. Many are downright silly. What's not silly is the idea that bizarre and unforeseen things can happen when the world is in turmoil. There's no way to know what those things might be, but a good apocalypse gun should be able to handle these three broad categories of exotic threats. First, big and dangerous threats. Perhaps it escaped from a zoo or a lab. Maybe it was forced out of its natural habitat. It could have even come from another planet or dimension. No matter where the big guy came from, you need heavy projectiles that can smash through bone or armor and penetrate deep enough to hit vital organs. This 400 grain hardcast round penetrates 45 inches in ballistics gel. That's close to four feet. Only rounds that can hammer down that deep can give you a fighting chance against really big threats. The ability to make several fast follow-up shots is also essential. The second type of exotic threat is small swarming things. Single bullets are ineffective against swarms of birds, insects, and bats. For this type of threat, 410 shells packed with bird shot are a strong response. A 3-inch number 7 shot shell carries over 200 pellets and can bring down multiple small targets at once. The last type of exotic threat is creatures with special resistances and vulnerabilities. A fantasy example is a werewolf's resistance to normal bullets and its vulnerability to silver. A real-world example is a snail's vulnerability to salt. In the apocalypse, it might be aliens that are only vulnerable to magnesium. Again, the Raging Judge Magnum does not disappoint. It is very easy to convert its 410 shotgun shells into wax cartridges that carry custom payloads. Wax slugs create vicious wounds and dump their custom contents directly into the body of whatever they hit. So there it is, the one apocalypse firearm that's better than all the others. It's not perfect, and there may be guns out there that beat it in one or two categories. But when it comes to the complete apocalypse challenge, including self-defense, ammo scarcity, travel, hunting, and exotic threats, there's no other firearm out there that comes anywhere close to the Raging Judge Magnum, the best apocalypse gun in the world. Thank you.